Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at word choice in writing. Our goals for today are to look at what is word choice in writing, how does a writer identify strong word choice, and what does strong word choice look like when we see it. Let's start off by taking a look at what is good word choice. When we're writing or when we're reading, we can typically identify strong word choice pretty easily. It's the use of strong, specific vocabulary words. Those words will then communicate the writer's ideas in a clear and intelligent manner. They will allow the reader to visualize the ideas in action and allow that reader to comprehend the depth and breadth of the content. So how do we use word choice in writing? Writers actually have many different purposes for writing and they'll use word choice to get those purposes across. Sometimes they're trying to enlighten, sometimes to engage, sometimes a writer's purpose is to entertain, and sometimes it is to educate. Word choice will be a little bit different depending upon the type of writing that is being done. So how can we identify strong vocabulary, strong word choice? It's actually going to be different depending upon the type of writing that we're looking at. In persuasive writing, the word choice will help to move a reader from a point of not knowing very much about a topic to a point of having a thorough understanding of the topic and preferably a, an agreement with the writer. In descriptive writing, such as descriptive essays and stories, strong word choice is going to allow the reader to understand the ideas the writer is getting across with imagery, with visuals, and with sensory details. Those can help out enormously. Let's take a look at some examples here. This is a description of a magical gate. We're going to see how it is used strong word choice. At the end of the barbed rue hedge flourishes a sleepy rose bush with buds in the dusty, quiet pink found only in the sweet, misty isle of light. Softly sneak up to the old rusty gate, but carefully as though you are approaching an ancient sanctuary of the gods. For roaming behind the gate is magic of the most delicate yet marvelous kind, fairy magic. So here we have an example of a piece of writing, very short, but it uses good word choice. It gives us some very good visual pictures so that we can imagine exactly what this place looks like without even seeing the picture. Here is a very different type of writing here, piece of a letter. Dear HOA bar board, the house at 145 South Dane Street has a fence that appears to be a safety hazard and is likely beyond reasonable repair. Its gate has visibly fallen off of the hinge and is propped open with a large rusty coffee can. At least a quarter of the original colonial style pickets have liberated themselves completely from the structure, probably an attempt to escape, and lie among the jungly grass. So here we have a very different type of writing. This piece is a part of a letter that would go to an HOA board, probably to let the board know that there is a problem with a particular house in the neighborhood. Sounds like this is a safety issue here. But the specific word choice that is used, the specific wording, uh, allow the reader to visualize exactly what it is that's being said, exactly what it is that's being communicated, so that the reader totally understands without even seeing the picture. Let's take a look at weak word choice. Let's look at what the opposite looks like. At the end of the dark path is a pink rose bush. Go into an old gate. That is where the fairies are. But be careful so that it, they don't get you. So here we have an example of the opposite. This is weak word choice. So it's describing the same thing as earlier, the magical gate, but it's not using all those great vocabulary words that give us the wonderful visuals so that we can really picture exactly what that place is like. And another example of weak word choice. Dear HOA board, a house at 145 South Dane Street has a very old broken fence. Its gate fell off and is propped open. At least a quarter of the pickets fell off and are lying on the grass which hasn't been mowed. So here we have a letter that is very factual in nature, but it doesn't give the specifics that the other letter did. So this is very hard to picture. The board would probably have a lot of questions after reading this letter here. They wouldn't be able to picture exactly what it is that's going on. So what do we do as writers when we're using strong word choice? Well, we're definitely using our strong words, 
We're also applying figurative language, such as similes and metaphors, hyperbole, paradox, onomatopoeia, personification, and oxymoron. Those can really help to get our ideas across in a strong manner. We're using our words appropriately for the writing purpose and we're using our words correctly and clearly. Very important there. The expectations of students include understand what word choice is, improve upon weak word choice in your own writing, and help your peers to improve upon their word choice. Sometimes improving upon your own word choice can actually be difficult and it can be helpful to work with a partner. What you should know and be able to do at this point is to understand what word choice is, to know how to identify strong word choice, and to be able to improve upon your word choice. I hope this information has been helpful to your writing. Good luck.